Good morning. Praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Welcome to Victorious Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. For the last three months, we've been on the study of kingdom finances, kingdom finances for three months. This is a sequel to the series called the kingdom of God. And then a few weeks ago, we've been talking about tithing and then Last week, again, we picked up with the law of sowing and reaping. Now, last week, I was giving you steps or principles, I could say, of the law of sowing and reaping. Principles that govern the law of sowing and reaping and steps to take in following and fulfilling and working the law of of sowing and reaping steps to follow in working the law in exercising the law in practicing the law of sowing and reaping. And so I want to give you a review real quickly of the law of sowing and reaping and the steps and the principles to follow when operating in and practicing and working and exercising the law of sowing and reaping. Number one, You plant the word of God in your heart. Why? Because faith comes by hearing the word. Romans 10, 17 says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so in all things we do, and especially in working in the law of sowing and reaping, you have to do everything by faith, by faith and Part B of that is, and be led by the Holy Spirit. Be led by the Holy Spirit. Now remember, again, let me remind you that we have talked about the kingdom of God. It is the system of God. It is God's system of operating. It's the way God does things. Now, if you've missed any of these radio programs, you can go to the website, www.victoriousfaith, V-I-C-T-O-R-I-O-U-S, faith, F-A-I-T-H dot C-O, and go to the website, Radio Broadcast Archives, and all the radio programs are on there all the way back to the very beginning. And you can listen to all of them 24-7, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And so... Remember, we have said that in the kingdom of God, there are spiritual laws that govern the kingdom, spiritual laws that rule the kingdom, govern the kingdom in the way everything is done, the way the whole system operates. And if you're going to operate in the kingdom of God system, you have to operate by these spiritual laws. If you do not operate by these spiritual laws, you do not receive what is available in the kingdom. Of God. These spiritual laws are a must. This is the way God does everything that He does. And so I've given to you what I call seven primary spiritual laws. There are others, but these are primary, and the others would all relate to these seven primary laws. And so we have one, the spiritual law of love, two, the law of faith. Three, the law of the creative power of words. Four is the law of sowing and reaping. Five is the law of spiritual authority or dominion to rule. Six is the law of wisdom. That is being led by the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is the spirit of wisdom. Doing what the Holy Spirit says. And that's number seven, the law of obedience. Doing what God says to do. The law of obedience and these seven laws are interrelated and interdependent. They all operate dependent upon one another related to one another. You cannot pull one out and operate it alone because faith works by love, works by speaking words, works by exercising authority, works by the leading of the Holy Spirit, works by being obedient to God. They all work together. And so the same with the law of sowing and reaping. You must remember that in using the law of sowing and reaping, you're going to be operating in love, in faith, by speaking words, exercising authority, and by wisdom, by the leading of the spirit, and by obedience. 
Amen. So that's where we are at principle number one or step number one of the law of sowing and reaping is plant the word of God in your heart to produce faith and be led by the Holy Spirit or remember to operate in all seven laws together. Be led by the spirit and operate in faith. Number two, pray about what to sow. Why? Because every seed brings forth a harvest of the same kind. Every seed brings forth a harvest of the same kind. Whatever a man sows, that will he also reap. And I'm not going to review more on that. You can go back and listen to those radio programs. We already talked about it. Number three, pray. Notice that a lot of this is prayer. Prayer is building your faith in, well, going to the word, build your faith. And then prayer is seeking the Holy Spirit for direction and wisdom. Prayer is seeking the Holy Spirit for direction and wisdom. So number three is pray about how much, how much to sow. Your offering establishes your harvest. With the measure you use, it'll be measured back to you. If you sow sparingly, you will also reap sparingly. If you sow generously, you will also reap generously. These scriptures are Luke 6, 38 and 2 Corinthians 9, 6. And then number four, pray about where to sow. Where to sow or to whom do you sow? And under that, we have sub points. A, you sow into your local church and church projects. B, so into your spiritual teachers and their ministry. We talked about this last Friday. We are to always remember that we want to sow upward. Sow into the teachers and the ministries and the anointings that are greater than our own. Also in those that you want to receive into your own life. Because sowing your seed into a ministry will then connect you to that ministry so that the flow of that anointing and that gift and that revelation flows into your life and it multiplies in your life. Remember you sow and you reap of the same kind and you reap greater measure, increased measure. So, so upward into your spiritual teachers and their ministries. C, you sow into various ministries and outreaches that the Lord will direct you to. Ministries, outreaches, and projects that the Lord will direct you to by his direction. You sow here, you sow there. And as we said, that as you give into a work, a ministry, then you are also a partaker in the harvest and the reward of that ministry. So that if you sow into a missions ministry, the the harvest that comes in spiritually, the reward for that ministry, you share, you share in it. If you give into a prison ministry or an orphanage ministry or a feeding the hungry ministry or a television or a radio ministry, the lives that they touch and the lives that are ministered to people that are saved, healed, delivered, changed, transformed, reformed. And the breakthroughs that happen and the miracles that are done through a ministry. If you are a sower into that ministry, then you share and receive part of the reward, a reward for the work. Hallelujah. And then number uh, letter D give to the poor. As um, it says in Galatians two ten, we should continue to remember the poor. And remember, Jesus said, you will always have the poor with you and we should always be giving to the poor. And then letter E you can sow seed into specific things that you are wanting to receive for yourself. For example, 
giving clothes to reap clothes, give a vehicle to somebody who needs a vehicle so that you reap a vehicle, give your house to somebody who needs a house and you reap a house, etc., etc. So things that you are wanting to receive in your own life, you give into that. Amen. And then we ended up last week with principle number five. Principle number five. That is pray over your seed. Now, when we talked about tithing last week and the week before, I was sharing with you at the end of that teaching about how you pray over your tithe and you offer your tithe to Jesus, our high priest. And we present it to him in faith, in love, in obedience, in worship, in praise, in thanksgiving. And then we believe God for the blessing to return upon ourselves. And so the same is true when you give your seed, when you plant seed, take time to prepare the seed before you give it. It's the same with your tithe. Do not just rush to church and put your tithe in the offering or your seed in the offering plate without making time to pray over it. Because it will be according to your faith and prayers as you give that will determine how good of a return you receive back. There are things that affect how much you get in return. And I'll get to that. Well, let me ma- let me name it for you. For example, right now, there are things that affect how much return you receive. There is one, there is the quality of the seed. Two, there is the quality of the ground. And you could not, you could say not only the quality of the seed and the quality of the ground, but you can say being led. How much seed, what kind of seed and where, what ground do you plant it in? So being led by what seed and how much seed and being led by what ground led to what ground by the Holy Spirit to sow in. Step three we're going to get to is the cultivation of your seed. Step And four is what affects the multiplication is your faith. And number five, what affects multiplication is your obedience. And so we see that If you just throw your money into the offering plate or the offering basket without taking the time to release your faith, then you are not going to receive optimum yield. You must take the time to pray. And I encourage you, pray before you go to church. If you go to church Sunday morning, then you should take time on Saturday or any time during the week. Don't be in a rush. Don't try to do it on your way to church. Don't try to do it as the basket is coming down the row in the church service. Do it ahead of time so that it is quality time. This is a major part of your giving. It's your faith and your prayer and your declaration, your words that you release when you give or what words it release over the tithe and over the seed that determines how much of a harvest you will get in return. So this is step five. Then pray over your seed in that you consecrate it to God's service. You can name your seed that is determining What kind of harvest you want? What it is you're believing for? I'm planting this as seed for a a house, seed for a car, seed for debt payoff, etc. And as you name your seed, which is naming what you're believing for, being specific, and then bless 
your seed. Remember, we taught a few weeks ago about the power of the blessing. The blessing is speaking words of increase and multiplication. The blessing is the anointing to multiply. And we read in scripture where Isaac blessed Jacob. Jacob blessed his sons and his grandsons. Jesus blessed the children. So this is the way I pray over my seed. I take it in my hands. I lay my hands on it as a point of releasing the anointing. Remember, the anointing is released and transferred two ways, by touch and by words. Anointing is released and transferred two ways, by touch and by words. So when you pray over your tithe and when you pray over your seed, you touch it and you speak over it. Words of faith and blessing. And so I would lay my hands on my seed and say, in the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you that you have given me increase and you have given me this seed to sow. As you have said in Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10, you said that you supply bread for food and you give seed to the sower and you enlarge the harvest of our righteousness. It says, now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. And so, Lord, I thank you that you have supplied seed to me because I am a sower. I have made a dedication of my life, a commitment in my life. I am a sower. I am a sower and you have supplied my seed to sow and you have supplied my bread for food. And you said you would also supply and increase my store of seed and you will enlarge the harvest of my righteousness. So I thank you for supplying this seed in the name of Jesus. And in the name of Jesus, I name my seed for this specific need. You can name it for whatever you're believing for debt payoff, new clothes or whatever. And then you say, in the name of Jesus, I bless my seed and I command my seed, be fruitful and multiply, 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 multiply and increase 100 fold and a thousand times more. Now, a thousand times more scripture is Deuteronomy 111. Deuteronomy 111 says that he will cause you to increase a thousand times more. So based on Deuteronomy 111, I believe for a thousand times more increase in the name of Jesus. And Father, I bless the seed. I command it be fruitful and multiply. I name my seed. I plead the blood of Jesus over my seed and I speak life to my seed. I now give my seed into good ground and I call that ministry or that church where I'm giving. I call that ministry blessed. I call them fruitful and increasing in the name of Jesus. And Father, I now believe I received a harvest and the return on all my seed sown, even before today, all the seed that I've ever sown. I believe I receive. I call my harvest to come from the north, south, east, and west. I say, Satan, you take your hands off my seed, off my harvest, off what belongs to me. De- according to Malachi 3.11, the devourer is rebuked for my sake. You are rebuked, Satan, off of my life, off of my finances, off of all the things that pertain to me, off of my harvest. And I say, harvest, be released now and come into my hands in the name of Jesus. And according to Matthew 13.39, 39, which says the harvest is the end of the age and the harvesters are angels. And according to Hebrews one, I declare 
that angels, you go, you are ministering servants, 114, you are ministering servants sent to minister for the heirs of salvation, and you are the harvesters of the end of the age. I say, go gather my harvest in the name of Jesus and bring it into my storehouse in the name of Jesus. I bless my seed. I release my seed right now in faith, and I present it to you, Father. You are the blesser in Jesus' name. I thank you for it. Amen. And amen. So in that way, you consecrate your, ser- your your seed to God's service. Father, I release the seed into the kingdom of God to do your work, to expand the kingdom in the name of Jesus, to bring fruit into the kingdom of God and harvest into the kingdom of God. Or if you're giving it into a person, I give this into this person's life that they would be fruitful and multiply, that they would be increased by it, that they would be blessed by it in the name of Jesus. And so you lay your hand on your seed and you speak a prayer of faith and blessing and the command to multiply over your seed and the dedication of your seed to what you are believing for, the naming of your seed, what you're believing God for. And then you also believe for your harvest and you call your harvest to come in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. And then after you give your seed, I mean, after you pray over your seed, then you give. After you have prayed over your seed and dedicated your seed, then you give your seed. You release your seed. You release it into the ground. You plant it and you give with no strings attached. If you give and and you give into a church or a ministry, you say, I'm giving this, but I expect this. Then you've got strings attached. Then you do not receive your blessing from God. Your strings, if you have strings attached to your gift in your church, you know, there are people who give to their church and say, okay, pastor, I'm going to give you this big money, but I want this and I want this and I want this. Well, then you have negated any spiritual return. If you have put strings on your sewing. So you give with no strings attached and you give in faith. You give in the name of Jesus and you give in faith in believing God. Amen. And then remember the attitude of your giving. You give in love. God so loved the world that he gave. We should give out of the heart of love. Also, we give to honor the Lord. We give to honor God, to give him honor. And three, you give willingly, not under compulsion or reluctantly. Four, you give cheerfully. Joyfully, for God loves a cheerful giver. Five, you give freely. As Jesus said in Matthew 10, 8, freely you have received, freely give. Six, you give generously. You give generously. And seven, you give in faith. And then eight, you give in your gift to accomplish God's will and purposes in the earth for God's kingdom to come and his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And don't forget the principle of first, the principle of first. And we talked about that early on in this series, kingdom finances, where we read Matthew six thirty three, which says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you as well. And many people forget to put God first. They try to pay their bills first. They buy their groceries first. They take care of the kids first. And then they see what they have left over when they go to church and they pull out a little bit and put it in the offering. And we also studied the Cain and Abel offerings. And we saw that the real reason why God rejected Cain's offering was because Cain's offering was last and not first. Abel's offering was the firstborn and the best. And God is not honored by last 
offerings or leftover offerings after you take care of yourself. And remember, it is a step of faith. You have to live by faith. Hebrews eleven six says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. And when you are taking care of yourself first, making sure you get all your bills paid first before you give God your tithe. We saw that tithing also was a first fruits. It was it is part of the first fruits. It's the first and the top that you take off of what you get, your income that you get, that tithing is a first. And so that we give to God first and then he blesses what we have left. That honors God. That is an honor to God. And you know, if all Christians would just do that, it's just one of the laws of the spirit. Then every church and ministry project in the entire world would be fully funded. There would be plenty for all orphanages, all Bible schools, all church needs, all radio programs and TV ministries, and all book publication and evangelism and soul winning, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So as you give into this ministry, I bless your seed and I bless your life. I say, be fruitful, multiply, multiply, multiply. And I stand in faith with you for you to receive your hundredfold return in the name of Jesus. We believe God with you for what you need in your life. Now join me again tomorrow. And remember, God loves you. You're blessed and highly favored by the Lord.